are Harbor Freight's tools worth buying? When you look in Harbor Freight today though, it may look alike the Harbor Freight you looked in, walked into 10 or 20 years ago, but it's very different. Harbor Freight has been working to improve their brand. Harbor Freight was founded in 1977 by a father-son team. The father is now retired and the son is running the company. It's not a corporation, it's still privately held. And they've got over 1,400 stores, which is pretty impressive for a privately held company. In the last decade, the effort in Harbor Tools has been going to improving their brand. Now, when you walk into Harbor Freight, everything there is Harbor Freight brands. There's maybe 20 different, 30 different brands of tools, but they're all Harbor Freight brands. And you'll never find Harbor Freight brands in any other store. It's, they're all exclusive. They're things that are designed and built by that company and sold by that company. So everything is contained in-house, you might say. Harbor Freight has come out with some what we would call higher level brands. In the area of power tools, handheld power tools and, and stationary power tools, there's two brands in particular. That's Bauer and Hercules, and those are their higher end brands. Bauer is intended to compete with, say, like Ryobi and Craftsman for the consumer market, and Hercules is actually intended to be a professional grade tool competing with Milwaukee and DeWalt and Makita. Now, that's a hard market to break into. I don't know how effective they're doing at it, but I have looked at some of the tools and they look like they're well-made tools. I haven't had the opportunity yet to use them. Harbor Freight still sells what we could call their legacy brands. And I'm talking about like Chicago Electric, Chicago Pneumatic, uh, Chicago Machinery. Those are their, their older brands. In fact, this, this drill press back here and this belt sander are both Harbor Freight Chicago Machinery brands, okay? But our big question here is what's worth buying and what's not worth buying? I don't think we can give a blanket answer to that. You get what you pay for to some extent. Now with Harbor Freight, you do save money because Harbor Freight is a totally, totally vertically integrated. That means the manufacturing and the distribution and the retail is all the same company. That's hugely different than say Milwaukee. Milwaukee is owned by a parent corporation. They manufacture the tools which are sold to wholesalers who then sell them to retailers who then sell them to the public. So every step of that process, they've got to make a profit, okay? Harbor Freight only has to make profit overall. Huge, huge difference in the business model. And that's part of why you save money when you buy tools from Harbor Freight. Now, it's not the only thing. There's some of their tools that are very cheap, and I use that in both senses, both of quality and of price. You look at some of the lower cost lines of tools, you find tools that maybe aren't made as well. I've had this, this drill press for over a decade, and the same with this belt sander. And they're fairly simple tools, but they do their job very well. I bought the drill press because I needed to machine some aluminum for a particular project. And I bought it and installed this XY vise on it, which came also from Harbor Freight. And that allowed me to do machining work on it. Now it did chatter. But that's any drill press is going to chatter when you try new machining on it because they're not as massive as a milling machine that a machinist would use. So yes, you get chatter, okay, but it did the job. That's what counts. I've used it now for a lot of years. I prefer using a drill press over a hand drill whenever I can because I get a more accurate hole, I, more specifically getting it perpendicular to the surface, okay? So I use it a lot. There's a little belt sander I've had for a number of years. This is actually the second belt sander I bought from Harbor Freight because first I bought their one inch wide one and, and I used that for a while because it was lesser expensive. But then I decided I had to up my game and I spent the extra money for this one and pass that one on to a friend, okay? Now you notice there is, there's no six inch disc sander on the side, that's my fault, I removed that because uh, sometimes I do some longer pieces and they would run into that, so I got that out of the way. These tools get used every day in my shop, they've been used every day for over a decade in my shop and they, they still last. Again, they're fairly simple tools and that does help with how their longevity, okay? On the other hand, back about the same time period, I bought uh, a cordless drill from Harbor Freight. Back then, the cordless drills were um, nickel cadmium, not lithium ion, and it lasted me about a year. So I bought another one, it lasted me about a year, and I bought another one, it lasted me about a year, and I gave up on Harbor Freight's dr drills, and I went and bought somebody else's, okay? It depends on the tool. Now, there's a huge difference, though, in the, those drills that I was buying then and the drills that they're selling now, okay? The two brands I mentioned, the Bauer and the Hercules, are much better quality tools than those Chicago Electric tools I bought back then. And I have no question in my mind that they would last better because they're better built tools. My cordless drill driver right now is in Milwaukee, which counting, it's one of the top brands out there. And if I was to take that apart and take apart a Bauer drill driver and put them side by side, one of the notable things is both of them have metal gears. Now that's important because plastic gears aren't gonna last as long as metal gears. Both of them use metal gears. So that tells me that the Bauer tool is built for longevity just like the Milwaukee is. Right, part of what you're paying for 
when you buy better quality tools is you're paying for life expectancy. How long is that tool going to last? A professional carpenter working on building houses every day can't afford to have his tools break in the middle of the day. So he'll spend the money on the higher dollar brands because he knows it'll keep working for him. For him, it doesn't make sense to buy something that he might pick up at Walmart uh, for $19.95 because he just has to have something. But for you and I as home woodworkers that are making projects in our shop, maybe doing some remodeling around our home, we don't have to have the high dollar tools to get what we need out of our tools. So one of the things we have to consider anytime we're making a tool purchase is just how good do I need? I'll give you an example. I've got this, this hammer drill here. Now hammer drills are used when you're drilling into concrete because you can't do it with a regular drill. And I needed to drill into concrete. This was a project that came up a couple years ago. We had moved into this house and I had to put our mailbox out there and I had to mount it with four bolts into the, the concrete uh, slab. I could have gone out and spent 200 to 300 dollars on a name brand hammer drill and gotten, I'm sure, a quality hammer drill, okay? But I was looking at, this is a one-shot project. When else am I gonna need a hammer drill? I've made it for almost 50 years without owning a hammer drill, okay? So I went to Harbor Freight and I bought their Bauer hammer drill. Well, this did the job just fine. And then I needed to put in a railing over at my mother-in-law's and that had to go into concrete. And so I brought it over there and it did that just fine. And I've had a couple other projects I've had to do, but it's not something I use every day. It's not like my drill driver that I'm grabbing a couple times a day or my handheld impact driver that I'm grabbing several times a day to drive screws. It's a once in a while I use it. It doesn't make sense for me to, for me personally to buy a Milwaukee hammer drill at 200 and some odd dollars that'll do the same job this does and I'm only going to use it once a year. So that's something to consider on every single tool purchase you make. If it's something you use all the time, yeah, you're probably going to want to spend more money and buy a better quality tool. But if it's something you're rarely going to use, then you need to consider, okay, what will do what I need and what will last long enough? Will it get me through a few projects? I paid, I think it was $59.95 for this tool. And I've used it on, say, three projects now. So I, it's $20 a project. If I had bought that $200 hammer drill and I used it on three projects, that's $70 a project. If I never used it again, I would have spent $70 a project as opposed to $20 a project. There's your difference, okay? So one of the things we have to take into consideration is how much we use it. The other thing we have to take into consideration is how many moving parts are there in the tool. Now, when we look at a, a drill press, a drill press is a fairly simple tool. You got a motor, there's some pulleys up there under the top cover with a, with a belt, and then there's a spindle here that goes round and round, and it's got a, a, a morse taper for the chuck to sit into. That's the whole tool. It's not real complicated. This belt sander, you got a motor, you got a belt, and then you got the rollers that the belt goes around. It's not real complicated. On the other hand, if we compare those to say a sliding dual belver miter saw, we're talking about a much more complex tool then. A lot of th more things that can go wrong with that more complex tool, and that affects quality. That affects what quality level we want to buy. If I was going out today to buy a miter saw, I would definitely be looking at what can go wrong with that saw and the parts that can go wrong how rugged are they? How robust are they? Are they going to last? When I was over at Harbor Freight recently, I did take a few minutes to look around and I looked at their miter saws and I saw everything from cheap, cheap to really good. And the cheap, cheap was what do you expect it to be? Cheap, cheap, okay? But then again, you look at their Bauer and their Hercules saws and they look comparable to a, say, a DeWalt. They had a nice long stroke. They had a, a the 12 inch blade. Uh, the miter mechanism locked nicely at, at your expected indents, you know, at like 22 and a half, 45 degrees. All the adjustments were easy to work with. It seemed to be a good quality tool. So I would not hesitate to buy one. I also looked at their table saws. Now I, I'm perfectly happy with the table saw I have, but a table saw to me is a real kind of a teller in uh, looking at tool quality because the one thing that to me is the most important to look at on a table saw is the fence. So they had two what are called portable contractors table saws. They had one that was their, their Bauer line and one that was their Hercules line. And I looked at them both and they were sitting side by side so it was easy to do that. Both were roughly the same size, but the fences were considerably different. And that's what I was really looking at. I unlocked the fence on the Bauer one and I tried wiggling it and it was like a fish's tail. Now I don't know if that was just that particular saw and it wasn't set up properly or if that's indicative, but I'll tell you what, that turned me off right there. I didn't look at that one anymore. Then I took a step over and I looked at the Hercules. 
the Hercules, the adjustment, you undo the lock. First of all, there was no movement. Second of all, you have a crank there and you have a, a sprocket to move the, uh, the fence over and keep it perpendicular, or we could say parallel to the blade, okay? That's very much like what DeWalt has on their contractor's job site saw. So that impressed me. That says these people are paying attention to what's going on in the marketplace and paying attention to what gives you a quality tool. I, if I needed a small contractor's job site saw, I would take another real good look at that Hercules and I probably wouldn't hesitate to buy it. I don't need one, so I'm not doing that. But it, it showed me that they paying attention with these brands to trying to make tools that will meet the needs of more serious hobbyists and even professionals. The Hercules brand is intended to compete with professional tool brands like Milwaukee, Makita, and DeWalt. Uh, good luck to them because that's a hard market to break into, but they're doing the right things to try and make their tools uh, acceptable and even uh, look favorably upon by contractors. Now, there are a lot of other tools in Harbor Freight that you and I really have no interest in. I, you know, I don't know any way to use a wire feed welder in woodworking. I've got one, I've never used it with woodworking. I don't know any way to use mechanics tools for woodworking, okay? Uh, so there's a lot of stuff they have in there that really aren't of interest to us. What, what interests us as woodworkers are the power tools and a few hand tools. Now, I'll say they don't have any very many woodworkers hand tools, you know, planes, chisels, things like that. They do have a low cost uh, jack plane, looks to be okay, but the real, th the things that really tell if a jack plane are good or not, are not something you can see looking at one sitting on the shelf. They had a couple sets of chisels that were priced so low that I would say, have to say they're probably not very good quality steel. I wouldn't even consider them. One thing they do have in the hand tools that is rather impressive is clamps. Now, these clamps, I've got, four of these in, in this size and four that are a little shorter and I have had these things for years. And this is just a, a simple bar clamp. And if I compare this to any other brand, I would say maybe the metal of the bar is a little thinner. I've used these for years and, and the only one that's broken is one that my teenage son decides he'd see how tight he could get it. You know how teenagers can be. And yeah, he broke it, okay? But these fast acting clamps, they're not designed for real high pressure. These have lasted me for years. They're, they're my go-to clamp for an awful lot of things. And they were low cost. I think I paid like $4.99 a piece for them or something like that. These, these you can get on sale for $2.99. These are also from Harbor Freight. This is a six inch bar clamp, but it's got the, the screw handle. Now I have about eight of these things and they are fantastic. And I use them quite a bit. They're rugged, they hold up. You know, if I've got to laminate two pieces of wood, like I'm making a block to go on the lathe, these are ideal. Use them for uh, quite a bit. On the other hand, I've had what appears to be the exact same clamp except for 36 inches long. And what happened was that the handle broke off of the threaded portion there. Why didn't it on these and why did it on those? I don't know. These are great. <laughs> so when you're, you're looking, you gotta be looking. I mean, you really gotta be looking. You gotta be looking to see what it is and what are you getting for your money. I've had very, very good luck with these clamps. They also now have uh, their own parallel clamps out. I haven't actually used any of those because I have other parallel clamps. I don't need them, but they look to be robust, well-made. I would say the bar on them, again, is a little lighter than the bar on the ones I've got, but the ones that I've got, the bar almost looks like overkill, okay? So there are things like that that are very, very useful that you can get at Harbor Freight. You know, one of the most useful things I buy at Harbor Freight is cheap paintbrushes. As a general rule of thumb, the more complicated it is, make sure you go for the better brands. Again, it's all about getting the value you need. Don't spend too much, but don't spend too little at the same time. Buy the tools that are gonna to do the job, and if you can save money on them, it's worth doing. Harbor Freight will help you save money.